Our first presentation will be done by Junji Sakamoto. Uh, the title is Analysis of Fatigue Damage of Aluminum Alloy Under Multiaxial Random Vibration. Please. Thank you for the introduction. I am Junji Sakamoto from Yokohama National University in Japan. Today, I'd like to talk about analysis of fatigue damage of aluminum alloy under multi-axial random vibration. Today, uh, this is my uh, outline of my presentation. Firstly, I'll expa explain about the background and the objective. Several machines are subjected to vibration. For example, airplane and automobile. So, several studies have been conducted on the fatigue failure of materials subjected to vibration. For example, Whiteman et al. conducted single axis vibration test and two axis vibration test using round burnished specimen of aluminum alloy. And French also conducted single axis vibration test and two axis vibration test using square bar notched specimen. And moreover, Gregory et al. Uh, conducted six axis vibration test using bottom head type specimen of aluminum. However, their mechanisms and evaluation methods remain still unclear. So in this study, we have two objectives. First objective is to clarify the fracture behavior of a material subjected to random multiaxial vibration. And the second objective is to examine the possibility of predicting the time to failure using finite element analysis. Uh, let's move on to the method section. section. Uh, this slide shows a specimen for the vibration fatigue test. We selected the A5056 aluminum alloy as testing material. And the chemical composition and mechanical properties are listed in these tables. And this figure shows the bottom head type specimen and weight for the specimen. We employ the bottom head type specimen and we introduce the notch as the stress was concentrated as a notch. And we use the weight uh, to break the specimen easily. And we conducted the uh, March axis vibration fatigue test uh, at different gravitational acceleration conditions. The seven conditions, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70 GRMS. And the vibration frequency bands is 10 to 5,000 hertz. And environment is nitrogen gas environment. And we use the test equipment. Uh, this test equipment generates the March actual vibration. And we fix the specimen to the shaking table using four bolts and we employ the three accelerometers and some meter. And we also conducted finite element analysis. This slide shows the condition. We conducted random vibration analysis using uh, elastic analysis, and we conducted three condition analysis, 10, 30, and 70 GRMS. And this is uh, finite element model, and the bottom of the specimen was subjected to the power sector density, PSD, of the gravitational acceleration in the X, Y, and Z directions. And the PSD of the gravitational acceleration was determined based on the experimental values. And this figure shows the relationship between the ap applied gravitational acceleration and time to fracture. And the arrow indicates the fracture had not occurred for one hour. And we observe the vibration test, and we consider 
that structure could occur due to the resonant mode of the transverse bending of the head part. And you can see as the gravitational acceleration decreases, the time to failure roughly tends to increase. And in detail, in this area and in this area, the difference in the time to fracture is not confirmed. So big difference was not confirmed. So it is considered that the factors other than the gravitational acceleration influence the time to fracture. And we uh, also conducted the, of the, we conducted the observation of the surface and the fracture surface. And we interrupt the vibration test just before <laughs> the fracture, and we observe the surface. So you can see the jagged crack uh, on the surface of the bottom of notch. So why jagged? So there are two possible reasons. So first, one reason is the possibility that multiple cracks initiated and propagated and finally coalesced. And another possibility is that the crack initiated and propagated while changing their propagation direction because of the March axial stress. And after the observation of surface, we broke the specimen using tensile test and observed the fracture surface. So you can see the two types of surface. So one is deeper surface, surface due to the tensile loss after the <coughs> vibration test. And the second surface is the fatigue fracture surface due to the vibration loss. And we conducted, uh, uh, as you can see, as the fatigue fracture surface exists in the opposite direction as the center of the tensile fracture surface, therefore it is considered that this specimen was mainly subjected to a unidirectional bending mode, so this direction. And we observe the vibration fracture surface in detail. Then we observe the striation. And this, uh, as striations are observed along the different directions, Therefore, it is considered that the fracture could occur because of the propagation of multiple flux and coalescence thereof. And so far, I will explain about experimental results. Now, I will explain about analysis results. The first three, I conducted the modal analysis using finite element analysis. We identified six modes, natural frequencies, mode shapes. Mode, mode one and two are bending mode, and mode three is tro trojanal mode, and mode four and five are bending modes, and mode six is tension compression mode. Using the, this result of modal analysis, I conducted uh, the random vibration test analysis. So this is a result of random vibration analysis. The stress distribution is calculated as the normal distribution, like this figure. So this sigma means the standard deviation, the normal distribution. And also, stress was concentrated at the notch root. And the frequency is approximately 30 hertz. And we conducted three conditions, and in case of 30 and 70 GRMS, the strength, stress are uh, over tens, uh, tensile strengths. Therefore, in this time, we predicted the time to failure in case of 10 GRMS. And we assume the three stages of stress are loaded at the calculated ratio using the distribution. <coughs> in case of 10 GRMS, 
68.3% of the total load was loaded with a stress amplitude of 45 megapascal, and 27.1% was 91 megapascal, and 4.3% was 136 megapascal, and the rest was zero megapascal. We use the SN curve obtained by Patron for the uh, modified minor, minor's law. Using modified minor's law, we calculated to the time to fracture. The time to fracture was calculated to be approximately 6,000 minutes in case of 30 hertz frequency. <coughs> We compare the analysis result to the experimental results. In this figure, the round symbol indicates experimental results, and triangle symbol indicates the analysis results. And in case of 10 GRMS, the experimental result is 60 minutes non fracture, and analysis result is about 6,000 minutes fracture. So, therefore, the analysis results obtained using FEM is consistent with the experimental results. But in this, uh, in this point, uh, we are going to investigate more detail. And this is conclusions of my study. In this study, a March actual random vibration test was performed on aluminum alloy A5056. Furthermore, we investigated whether the fatigue life of materials subjected to vibration can be predicted using the finite element analysis. And the first is that fracture surface shows that fatigue fracture occurred in the bending resonance mode regardless of the gravitational acceleration for the given size and shape of the specimens. And the second point is that the time to failure was found to largely depend on the gravitational acceleration, though some other factors also influence the time to failure. And the third point is that the fatigue line predicted using a finite element analysis was consistent with the experimental result. And we are going to investigate more detail in this part. Thank you very much for your attention.